Well, hi ho everybody. Guess I'm going to do a little update here on my big rig group build. My AMT White Road Boss. Uh, let's see, where do I start? One, what a horrible kit. Uh, I guess on a skill level of one to five, it would definitely be a five. This is This is not for a uh, newer modeler or someone who doesn't have a, a lot of builds under his belt um, you're gonna have to really have some kit bashing scratch building skills developed um, this this thing is horrible actually the, the, this, the one to five skill level is is totally wrong for this it, they really need to for their skill rating for this kit they really need to use uh, Dante's nine levels of hell and this is going to be like skill level eight or more on the Dante scale um, this is hell I'm really surprised it got this far without being taken out by a large ball peen hammer um, but here it is um, pretty much just got a few touch-ups to do I still got to put my mud flaps and tail lights on my hoses on the engine um, and a few little touch-ups here and there from handling it and this and that because uh, you, you basically fondle the hell out of this thing trying to keep it together and put it together um, to start uh, I don't know where to start there's so many things I could bash about this thing I, I'm not really gonna bash though I mean I, I still like it um, I mean where else do you find a, a this subject to build I mean, AMT's got a lot of the older truck kits, and this is just what you're going to have to deal with if you want to build these. Um, it's modeling. Um, but still, yeah, it, it's it, the, the skill level for a kit like, especially this one in particular. I, I'm, I'm sure, I built AMT big rig kits when I was a young teen, and um, of course at that time I, I wasn't quite as critical about things. So I probably didn't notice a lot of these these problems, but uh, yeah, definitely. One good thing, the tires fit really nice. I mean, you, you couldn't ask for tires fitting the wheels better. Um, I was really surprised by that, but um, they made up for it in other places because a lot of things, oh my God. The steering, all the steering rods and everything in here. Um, I don't know, I'm afraid to pick it up. Let's see. First... And my battery box. I got my battery in there. I'll take that off so we get a little touch up on that. Um, let's see if I can show you that steering, the steering rods in there. Let's get that. Uh, it's all black, so well, yeah, I'm not doing too good a job with this, am I? Maybe you can see it. Hopefully, there's a whole bunch of rods right up here in the front for the steering. Um, yeah, that was a total nightmare trying to get those all in and stay in. Um, fuel tank in the instructions, they show this tank, this longer part up front. Um, there's no freaking way that fits that way because it won't even hit where it needs to hit on these. So that's totally backwards. Um, so yeah, the tank, the long part of the tank goes to the back. Um, battery box goes where it's supposed to that's a good thing um, oh trying to get these lined up for these drive shafts <clears throat> um, this drive shaft I mutilated it apparently it wasn't dry enough I mutilated it with my fingerprints um, set this up here like that hey, is that better Can we see all this so I started, I set the rear axles. You know, you just go by the way the instructions show. You're setting all this up. There's no positive location locators on anything on this kit, hardly ever, except for like some of these tank brackets and the battery box. Um, like on the engine, there's like no positive locators. The only there's like a couple of things for the that's for the engine mounts there. Uh, nothing, nothing positive back here. Nothing up here. Um, so I ended up setting these up, go to put the engine in to get it to sit where it needs to sit, drive shaft. Uh, apparently 
these axles are maybe somehow just a smidgen forward too much so I had to like shave down here and here to get that drive shaft to fit so that that would go in had to modify this front engine mount cross member because it was keeping the engine the engine wouldn't go in and sit down where it needed to and sit straight um, a whole bunch of whittling and finicky and blicka blicking and all that anyway so then the engine sits down lower so these can go in now the radiator doesn't want to fit right so I had to modify the radiator bottom to get it to sit down so that the fan would go in the shroud um, the fan what a mess that is I ended up it won't stay on I ended up drilling out the fan and the pulley um, pinned it with a 16th inch rod a styrene rod that seemed to fix that uh, for the hood hinges let me get this here I was looking at that ahead of time and I'm like this is gonna be impossible you get this onto the hood it's all gonna be heavy it's gonna to want to be hanging here there's pins on these two pieces that go inward you know outward the pins come outward and they go into these brackets here can we see those that bracket and that bracket they have holes these go on here the pins go to the outside and it's supposed to hold in there like that and I'm thinking okay so I got the hood glued to this grill and I mean I guess you could put this on first and then try to glue this to the hood uh, yeah anyway I don't think that's gonna work too good so I took the pins off drilled these out 80 thousandths styrene rod um, so basically they fit nice fairly snug when I go to put the hood on this will go up here on here I'll put the pin in put a little glue on it do the same thing over there and I'm going to hopefully that'll work out easier we're gonna find out um, that way I'm not fiddling with trying to keep these glued to this with the weight and all that and trying to prop this up so I should just be able to slide the pins in it'll hold it and then I can just put a dab of glue and keep them from falling out I don't think they're gonna fall out even without glue I got them fitting pretty nice so that's what my solution for that um, for the fifth wheel um, you know I just says you're just supposed to glue it all on there and I'm like well you know with no trailer on it, it's supposed to be tilted back like that with a trailer on it needs to be up like that anyway I, so I drilled those out, put pins in it, so that it doesn't fall off and it will pivot. So, that was just another, I didn't have to do that, I just, that's something I just wanted to do. I like, some, sometimes I'm just kind of functional that way. So, without a trailer, it can sit down, with a trailer it can come up. And it, and it does let it move, so maybe where you're displaying it with a trailer, maybe it's not too all level, this will kind of move a little. So, that was just something I wanted to do. Uh, so that's basically, uh, I, I, there's a lot of other things, you know, there's just so many. It's so hard to put this frame and keep it together when you're first doing it. Um, there's only a couple of things that sort of have a location. You're kind of guessing at everything. The instructions are very unclear. The engine, what a, that is a total confusing, uh, I mean, you go by the drawings and you just, some of it, you just take a guess at it and stab. Some of it, you kind of do some pre-fitting comparing to where it's going to sit make sure something doesn't interfere because I've been through that before um, but that's it for the the hard stuff anyway um, other than that yeah other than all of that uh, yeah it was uh, it's great um, engine is duplicolor Cummins beige transmission is Tamiya NATO black and then I put some Tamiya clear over that um, the frame that's just some black enamel it's like the cheap black enamel from the hardware store not not a name brand or anything um, it seemed to work the best that was after I had actually stripped this because I painted it once and it totally turned into crap that was with uh, 2x Rust-Oleum 2x yeah yeah uh, yeah it did me kind of like in you know, fornication did me hard so I had to strip the whole frame frames all together and paint it I had to strip it all and repaint it um, 
So I did that, hit it with a cheaper enamel, and I'm pretty happy with it. There's a few things, but with it going together, you don't see a lot of the stuff, that, you know, the little blems. Um, the red is uh, Tamiya Italian Red, TS, uh, whatever, if I can see it here somewhere. I'm totally ill-prepared. TS8, Italian Red. I like that red. Um, of course, I painted the wheels, the rings, the centers, the tanks, battery box. Um, some of this here, this is all just Tamiya paints. The exhaust manifold, I just kind of did. Uh, I just did that. I just played with it with some browns and some beiges and stuff, trying to make it look like a used a manifold. You know, they get hot, they rust. Um, you know, I work on diesels and things i know what the manifolds will look sort of look like um so i tried to mimic that Eh, it might be close it, it's close enough to make me happy right now um my belts i painted the green i right, see it better this way here you see those my, my fan belts um painted it that color green because it's kind of close to gates industrial belts I thought, oh, that's a big rig. You probably want industrial belts on it. So um, that's why their belts are that, that shade of green, that flat green. Actually, I painted them that green, and then I put some flat clear on them to dull them down. Um, that was that was a Tamiya color. I can't remember which one it was now. Yeah, can't remember which one it was now. It's one of their greens. It was XF71. No. Yeah, it might have been XF-71 Sky. No, Cockpit Green. Maybe that was it. Let's see here. Yeah, it's Cockpit Green. That's what I used. And um, my tires, I... You know... Um, I... I, I used to put them on the drill and sandpaper and I seen where some people were using air erasers and I was thinking oh I should pick up an air eraser I, I even looked at the cheap one at uh, China Freight Harbor Freight I'm sorry and uh, thought about buying one and then I, I'm like Skip you're an idiot I have a blast cabinet sand blast cabinet uh, I have it up at work and uh, you know it hardly gets used I'm thinking, it gets used so much that I forget that I have it. Um, that's how much I use it. So I took my tires in to work with me and uh, put them in the blast cabinet and sandblasted them. And um, I like it. It's a pretty nice effect. I'm probably going to start doing that. Too. So, yeah, that, that big old blast cabinet I have is going to be good for something now. Uh, it's going to be good for doing tires for models. And uh, it's a bigger cabinet, so I can actually put, you know, full-size car wheels and things like that in it. But um, So these will definitely fit in there. Not a problem. <laughs> and But, yeah, I like the effect. It. Uh, I had some pictures I took on my phone, and uh, my phone is a piece of crap. And somehow the pictures, you can see them on the phone, but they're not showing up to get them out of the phone. To transfer the file i don't know what's wrong that that phone pisses me off all the time I, I tried to use it to even shoot videos and um i don't know it screws me up every time never wants to work right has issues with memory all the time no matter what i do cleaning stuff out whatever it's just it's just a pain in pain in the ass so that's where we're at right now so Hopefully it's going to get done here. I got what two weeks, three weeks, two and a half weeks maybe. Um, I've got uh, so the chassis is pretty much done. I mean, I'm I'm pretty much saying it's done. It's got a few little things. Um, I'm saying it's probably a couple hours, an hour or two, little things on it. Um, but um, it's that which means in skip time, that's in reality is probably a day, two days, who knows, a week. Um, I've got the body stuff primed so got the cabin prime 
think that's looking pretty good now. I think it's good enough. The other challenge is this is going to be three colors. Um, here's the hood. The hood's ready to go. I'm not worrying about these lines here. These are like extensions and in the molding there's even like where they bolt on. So these are supposed to be like separate panels. So I'm not worrying about those lines. I remember my father, ex father in law he's passed away now. He uh, had a white road boss. And I remember quite a few things about it. And I remember there were some extensions on his fenders. And uh, so that's probably going to be like that is. And I got the sleeper. Looks pretty good other than I got... I don't know if I'm going to worry about it. I got a nib in it right there that I might have to see about sanding out. So we'll see. Other than that, I'd be ready to paint that just the way it is. So that's that. Uh, I think that's it. Got the air conditioner piece painted. Interior tub. Got things pretty much painted up now. I just got to start putting, assembling it. Um, oh, that's the other thing, the interior tub. So... These pins, all right, these are in, th these actually had positive locators to mount them to the frame. Um, these brackets and these pins go into those there. There's only one problem. The pins are closer together than those two location spots. So um, I'm going to have to do something with that. Otherwise, the interior tub would almost sit on there, right? So, yeah, one side and then, but anyway. The interior is craft paint, uh, Americana. Let me reach across here, guys. I got stuff everywhere. Uh, Alizarin Crimson. And I actually thinned that out with um, with uh, some washer fluid and airbrushed it. Um, you know, craft paints, it's just so granular. It's heavy. I don't know what you say. It's just kind of so granular. The, the pigments or whatever are really like heavy. Uh, they're not real fine. They're very coarse. Um, so I just left it flat here for carpet. Um, that's just Sharpie. Um, that's Tamiya semi-gloss. And then I took some Tamiya semi-gloss clear and went over the doors, the back panels, and the seats. And that kind of gave it like a nice semi-gloss, like a, a vinyl or a leather. And uh, that's what I'm doing on the interior and yeah so I guess I just need to go I gotta finish my dash um, starting to work on the wood grain here not sure how crappy that's gonna look yet I'm pretty sure it's what level of crap I'm not sure yet but I'm working on a high level of crap so we'll see how that turns out I think I'm gonna use decals for these gauges I got some of those aftermarket gauge decals from Gopher Racing and they look about the right sizes for these so once I get my wood grain however I'm gonna make that wood look we'll see and uh, that's it for now that's long enough I guess how far we're into this I don't know I can't see my timer anyway stop yapping so thanks everybody for stopping by and making it this far um, Appreciate everybody. Um, remember, shop cards for junk mail. There you go. There's some junk mail. Some of the finest junk mail you could ever have. If you get enough of these, you can wallpaper your living room or kitchen. So, if you want some junk mail, drop me a line. Skipomatics, modelmania at gmail.com. I'll have it in my description also. Um, so drop me a note, say, Hey, skip, send me some junk mail and I'll leave y'all at that. So thanks everybody. 
And until the next time, we'll catch you later.